Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. I'm with one of my favorite cowboys, Dusty Tuckness. Bull swung around there, kind of hook at me and, you know, ended up stepping on the side of my leg. It was definitely a, an injury that mentally I knew I had to control what I allowed in my mind. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good a shape you are in. If you're not right between the ears, mm -hmm. then, then it'll, all, it'll all fade away. It is so much mindset. I really feel like you can do, you can do so much more than you feel. Think. Well, yeah. And that's the problem. You Absolutely. have to stop thinking sometimes and just start doing. You know, growing up in the mountains in Wyoming, uh, shoot, I, I love to hunt. I love yeah. to fish. And, you know, I think it's another part of, you know, my fitness journey as well. I always say my rodeo gets in the way of my hunting and my hunting gets in the way of my rodeo. And it is such a mental game. You know, it's, uh, I always say it's 90% mental and the rest is in your head. And you got to, you know, accept the hard days, uh, look forward to the good days and just continue to, to work hard. And, make the best of each and every day. Pioneering the spirit of the Wild West with 70 years of legendary innovation by your side. Built on the legacy of the Ruger Single Six, the new Wrangler is aimed for the drifter in all of us. Saddle up and ride this one is wanted. The perfect revolver, whether it's your first or your next. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. Onyx has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to TopRet services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and TopRet to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the Elite membership to access Top Rut as well as other great Elite benefits. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for the Wild and Uncut podcast. We're coming at you live from RMEF's Hunter Outdoor Christmas, and I'm with one of my favorite cowboys, Dusty Tuckness. And I don't know, do we call you a cowboy? Because technically, you're like, the GOAT, greatest of all time bullfighter, <laughs> and they give him that name for a reason because you're a 14 time NFR bullfighter of the year and a 10 time champion bullfighter for the PBR. Is that, am I getting this uh, right? PRCA. PRCA, yeah, yeah. okay. So you're like, you are the definition of an athlete and um, like nerves of steel. <laughs> like we watched Dusty take a hit last night. This bull grabs him. We're round four NFR 2022 grabs him and flings him and he gets up like <laughs> dusted off. No problem. You, I mean, cause you're coming out of an injury and I mm -hmm. mean, how do you get through that mentally? Like this is insane to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is such a mental game. You know, it's, uh, I always say it's 90% mental and the rest is in your head. And uh, you know, if you can't control your mind, what goes in between your ears, and then, then it's really hard to be successful in anything in life. Yeah. I think so. You gotta, you know, accept the hard days, uh, look forward to the good days, and just continue to to work hard and make the best of each and every day. So you, what I love about you is you're also a man of faith, mm -hmm. and you know, you go into every day and you, you know, you take this time to like, okay, where, what is God telling me? Where do I need to be? And you've positioned mm -hmm. yourself to be one of the most respected men in this industry that is doing arguably one of the toughest jobs in the industry. I mean, you put your life on the line in an absolutely selfless way every time you step into one of those arenas. And, mm -hmm. and that is something that's tremendous. Like there's not very many people in the world that have that heart of gold and nerves of steel combination. And does you feel like that comes from your faith? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, a lot of it, you know, uh, but God's got a plan for all of us and, yeah. and it's kind of up to us to, 
to figure out that plan that he has and, and drawing closer to him will help open those doors and and, and those opportunities uh, that he has in store for us so for me at a young age obviously I grew up into the rodeo world my dad fought bulls my mom was involved and I always had a, a I think a, a passion and a love for it at a young age but I didn't really realize at that time it would turn into a full-time career and there was a lot of hot highs and lows through it you know when yeah. I was young I, I had some bad wrecks and it, it almost literally took me out of the rodeo world but it was really through receiving God into my life that really opened that door back up and, and really showed the path that I feel God really mm -hmm. had uh, laid out for me so it, it's just the connection and the relationship with God for me and and then whatever I put my my foot to or my hand to in life that I know you know, his word tells us that he's made us to be more than conquerors and, and that we can do all things through Christ who gives mm -hmm. us the strength. So, you know, you got to have that sharp mindset mentality and know that it's not just going to be a smooth sea all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus told his disciples that he to get in the boat and go across the other side. And, and he didn't say that the, the waves wouldn't come up or be a rough seas. Yeah. He said, I'd see you over there. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, he already said that he would see him through it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just the mindset that I really try to have each and every day is knowing that whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I'm going through, that God's going to walk with me and see me through it to the other side. As long as I stay true and connected to him, all things will work out for the good. So take us back. You, you know, you're saying your dad was a bullfighter. Your mom is your biggest hero, like, like champion. I know like for some of the back number nights, you're so sweet. You've brought your uh -huh. mom as your date. Yeah. And that is like, ladies, that is so sweet. <laughs> that, I mean, you bring, you know, that's like, she's been steadfast and she supports you. And, you know, she knows how dangerous it is every time you step into an arena. And she's like, look, mm -hmm. he's doing what he loves and I'm going to support him a hundred percent. I mean, is, is it the support of your parents you think that made you want to be a bullfighter? Cause you're kind of following in your dad's footsteps or. And I think, yeah, there's a connection there with the family history for sure. And, um, but just going back to, like I said before, of just truly feeling this is where God's had me, yeah. you know, coming through high school, I had opportunities to go play college football and that, and I, I have a big passion and love for football. And I was really kind of wanting to see where that went, but everything just kind of kept pulling back to the rodeo world. And, and like I said, the support group, you know, my mom, my dad, my brothers, the Tates, and, and even my rodeo family support group, they're mm -hmm. just, I can't, I can't script a better group of people that, uh, that I've had involvement in my life. And, but you know, the connection with dad and then, you know, yeah, like you said, mom, you know, she's my biggest fan and mm -hmm. I, I think she'd argue anybody oh, yeah. <laughs> for that. Uh, but yeah, she, she's always, uh, come out here to the finals in, in Vegas and she makes a lot of rodeos throughout the year. And, 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 you know, she, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a lot of nerve wracking at the start, yeah. especially the highs and lows, but I think she's got a piece over it. Um, she she's comfortable with me being out there. She knows that I love it, um, and that I work hard to try to be the best that I can. And and yeah, she she's she's my number one fan. So let's walk through a day in the life. I mean, what you do, you have to be fast. You have to be quick. Your instincts have to be spot on. So mm -hmm. you're reading the body language of an animal and then your body has to reflex so quickly mm -hmm. um how do you train for that every day what is what is a day in the life of you <laughs> well a normal day for me is i usually get up uh, at a good hour you know sometimes before the sun and i like to get my reading in right away and then get into the gym get a workout in um first thing i think just it, it helps kick start your day you get moving you get active and then from there usually maybe fall depending on the day and what rodeo i'm at or time of year will follow into some type of a little bit of recovery after. And then, you know, from there, we just, if we're at a rodeo, a lot of times it might be some promotional deals mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, a lunch and, you know, kind of a little chill time before the performance and get ready for that night here in Vegas. It's obviously a lot different. Uh, the time, you know, it's hard to get a lot of sleep in Vegas, but yeah. I really try to, uh, make those my priorities, you know, trying to get six to seven hours of sleep a night, um, trying to get the right nutrition in because you are on your feet all day long. Yeah. You're walking around all day long. You're going to uh, your sponsors and signing autographs and doing promotional things, and then you turn around and fight bulls that night. So it's a long two weeks, but it's the best two weeks uh, of the year for each and every rodeo athlete that you ask. And so you, for me, it's just really balancing my priorities. Not that I, I don't like to have fun because I do, uh, but that comes after my priorities are done. Mm -hmm. Once those are done, then what time I've got left and then I can go out and have some fun. Don't worry. I'm also boring. So I'm right there <laughs> with you. I'm in bed at like 
I, you probably stay out later than I do. I'm so bad. I'm such an old yeah. day. I'm like 9 30, 10 o'clock. I want to be in bed. And yeah, you haven't played cards with me yet. This no, year, so I'm, I'm like, little, I want to go to sleep. And then <laughs> I want to get up in the morning. And, and we've been going to the gym every morning and just kind of trying to feel that normalcy. But now, when you're training in the gym, you know, what, what are you focusing on? Are you working on a balance of muscular strength and endurance? Or are you, fo- I mean, what are you focusing on? I, I see you doing a lot of core and, mm-hmm. um, well, obviously our gym here is pretty limited. So yeah. what, what is, you know, how do you focus and balance your training like at home? So at home, it, it's a variety of things. So a lot of functional movements, um, you know, anything from swimming, running, biking to barbell movements, dumbbells, body weight. Uh, gymnastics. I, I try to prepare for anything that way. I'm not surprised by anything. But he so. can't do the splits. Yeah, no. I, I'm I, joking. I really sorry. Can't do the I didn't mean you said gymnastics. I had to do but, that. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I just really try to prepare for everything. Yeah. Um, so a lot of, I guess, the functional training, the CrossFit side yeah. of things. So um, yeah, that way I feel not only does it help me physically, but I think mentally in the long mm-hmm. run that, you know, if I can wake up at six in the morning with no music, no fans, no money, and it's you know, I've got a garage gym, so I don't have an AC or, uh, or a heater in there. So, so sometimes it's 20 degrees in there. Sometimes it's 118 degrees in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and put myself through workouts at a high intense level that that's when the hard work is. And then when I get to the arena, then it's time just to go apply what I've been doing and trust my training, trust the process, and, mm-hmm. and, and then I'll apply it to the arena. So that's Do you what, have a coach that you work with on the fitness side? Um, yes, I, I do have some coaches that I follow. Uh, James Hampton, uh, Parker uh, Whiteman, um, those are two guys that I really look to a lot um, throughout my fitness. And I've also got certified in in fitness myself. So I I know a lot of things Mm -hmm. that I can do to benefit myself and about, uh, you know, how to uh, put workouts together and what to train and when not to train. So like in Vegas here, uh, I don't really do any high intense workouts throughout the rodeo now. A lot of it is just kind of active recovery stuff being mm-hmm. moving you know getting some biking in getting some body uh, movement work on some balance some hand eye and some core always is is i think just solid because everything comes from your core mm-hmm. so that just kind of helps keep me refreshed and active and moving each day make me feeling good and and uh then once once we roll into the holidays we'll kind of slow down a little bit just let the body reboot until mm-hmm. we uh, get started the first of the year and then we'll we'll hit it again you know i don't really take any workouts off when i have perf days um I think I go back to old David Goggins talk, you know, callous in the mind and, and, uh, you know, what you can put yourself through. There's so much more, uh, that you are capable of doing than your mind will allow you to do. So I really try to just push myself to the limits. And, and I think at the end of the day, it's not so much for me. I want to set a good example uh, that hard work does pay off Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, dreams can come true. And if, like I said, uh, I'm a fan of the sports still to this day. And there are so many people that were a big, uh, part of my life growing up and, and I think that's part of the rodeo world is being able to give back and and see others be successful as well so let's talk about NFR last year mm-hmm. um, you know you you took a hit and you broke your leg yeah and you know you you were taken out for the year in essence right you spent an entire year recovering your body and and I can't imagine I mean I've had minor knee injuries been through some minor things but you know my career, Depends on my legs, yeah. like yours does, yeah. but in a different capacity. Um, t- walk us through what your mindset was, you know, when you were laying there and, mm-hmm. hey, I'm going to get through this. I mean, what, because there's so many people out there that have had an injury that are like, well, now that I've had this injury, it's going to taint my life mm-hmm. or I can't overcome it. Or, you know, the doctors have given me a diagnosis and and I'm doomed to that or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and how you worked through getting back to where you are today. Yeah, um, so 2000 or yeah, 2021, I guess, last year, the ninth round, just kind of a routine gap that we've hit multiple times. And, you know, we always say it's a game of inches. And uh, bull swung around there to kind of hook at me and, you know, ended up stepping on the side of my leg. And I, I felt... The pressure of him start to step on my leg, and I really try to roll my knee towards the ground to allow my leg to bend like it should. And obviously, it, stuff happened so fast, and there was so much weight on there. I, I ended up breaking both the tib and fib, displaced fracture, and it it, it was definitely painful. And, and but I think the thing that hurt the most was more of the heartfelt pain of mm-hmm. knowing that I can't shake this one off. Uh, so many times in the past, I've been able to 
tell the Justice Sports Medicine team that, hey, no, I'm good, I, I got this, and I knew this was something that yeah. was going to end end my year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just try to have a piece of me right away, just knowing that the first thing I told myself was healed in Jesus' name, but I knew – I told myself and I knew right then that, you know, God's going to use this for good. You know, this wasn't anything that he did, but it, through the, the trials and, and tribulations we go through in life, he can always make something good come out of it. And uh, There was a picture floating around and them packing me out on the board and my hands on my head. And, and around that moment, I just remember kind of gazing around, <clears throat> excuse me, the arena and just telling myself, I don't want this to predict my last time being in this arena. Yeah. So I really uh, focused on that. Um, you know, thanks to the, the sports medicine team, Mr. Gong, Ryan Grounty, there were so many people that just played a huge part in mm -hmm. the next several weeks to months uh, until I got back in the dirt uh, through this whole process. But it was definitely a, an injury that mentally I knew I had to uh, control what I allowed in my mind. Yeah. Um, I really hit the ground running. <clears throat> Sorry. Did they plate your leg? Yeah, so they put a rod and five screws in my leg, and I actually had to re have the surgery redone a month later um, because my leg was moving. Um, so they had to go in and redo it all a month later. So it set me back more, and you know it's like the devil just tried picking at me, and mm -hmm. I was just I wasn't accepting it. Uh, I knew I could get through this, and I knew with God that I could get back sooner than everybody thought. <laughs> the timeline that I had at from what I was hearing at the beginning, they they said anything from six to twelve months that I'd be out. I, was, I didn't want to accept that, um, and I, I continue to believe every day that I was going to get up and out of bed and walk, and obviously, you know, it took longer than I wanted to, but yeah. it all happens, you know, for a reason, and so the winter was, yeah, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of rehab, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of time spent off my feet, um, but, you know, I really hit the ground hard on my nutrition um, because I wanted my body to be Have functioning. Everything. The, at its best ability and then as well as talking about the mental game is you know if I was going to put that much effort and focus into my physical side I needed to do it with my mental side mm -hmm. because at the end of the day it doesn't matter how good a shape you're in you are in if you're not right between the ears mm -hmm. then, then it'll all it'll all fade away so I really mm -hmm. you know I, I got into David Goggins book I got in my Bible even more I just really started reading a lot of great testimonies and just people that went through adversity um, you know, Sean White, you know, when he, he won the Olympics so many times and he got a bad injury and then he come back. And one thing that he said that really stuck with me was being accept, ac accepting the fact that that could happen again. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think you've got to understand that this is a dangerous game and, yeah. and things can and could happen. And you've got to know that, hey, what you were doing was your job, yeah. but things can happen. And I think that gave me even more of a piece that, hey, you know what? I've done this a million times. Injuries do happen. Things can happen. But at the end of the day, the game didn't change while I was sitting out and then when I got back. Yeah. And I really had to trust that uh, in myself to be able to get back to where I wanted to be. I went through, uh, like I wrapped my snowmobile around a tree. I hit some open water on a mountain lion hunt, and my leg instantly was done. Like mm -hmm. my knee quadrupled in size. I lost all mm -hmm. mobility of my leg, and it froze. And it took me six months before I was walking. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time my leg bent and it would like move <laughs> again. I was crying. I had tears streaming down my eyes. I'm like, okay, I'm going to walk again. Cause yep. I was in a bed for like two or three months. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. Like I was coming out of, this is in January and coming out of hunting season. And then, you know, I have a moose hunt planned that fall. Yeah. So this is 2017 and I'm like, how am I, going to go moose hunting and that fall I did I went moose hunting and I carried my moose on my back and it was everything I could do <laughs> but that's what kept me going yeah. right is like okay well this injury has me in bed right now or I'm overcoming this and I literally can't walk but I'm not going to let this define yeah. my future. Yep, absolutely. And so I pushed through it and and did the rehab and did the work and, you know, similar to what you're saying. And there are so many people that have been, you know, um, contacted me about that story. And that's why I thought your story mm -hmm. would be so inspirational because it is so much mindset there. Yeah. You hear a lot of people say, well, I had this injury and now I can't. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like you can do, you can do so much more than you think. Think. Well, uh, yeah. And that's the problem. You Absolutely. have to stop thinking sometimes and just start doing and really live and not necessarily accept 
the somebody feet. Uh, yeah, yeah exactly like if this is what you love and you're gonna do it you can find a way to do it and we sue that with with um a group i work with wounded warrior outdoors you know you, you see men that uh, you know have you know double amputations yeah. and they're climbing mountains and they're doing incredible things. Mm -hmm. They're not fighting bulls, yeah. but you know, I mean, there's so much power in the mind and there's so much power in healing and, you know, just believing in yourself yeah. that you can accomplish that. And I think that goes back to also you talking about hard work mm -hmm. because I guarantee you never quit working mm -hmm. even when you were injured mm -hmm. every day. It might've been a small goal, but you probably kept captured that goal daily mm -hmm. even if they were small moments you know yeah absolutely i think you know you're talking about the healing i think there's a lot of healing through positive thinking yeah you know because if you're stressed and you're worried and you're, you're what ifs the unknowns it can really take your health down um and for me like you know talking about overcoming you know everybody when they do get injured i think for the most part kind of look back on like okay now what's the future hold yeah. and they know where they want to be but sometimes they don't really uh, uh, take in consideration the process and the work that it'll take. And so for me, like, I definitely knew where I wanted to be and when I kind of wanted to come back. But I didn't really focus on that mountain mountaintop. I really tried to embrace each step through the way. Mm -hmm. I tried to uh, take each day as it come. You're talking about the small goals. There was, you know, my therapist, uh, physical therapist, Kevin Taylor at Oklahoma City. You know, it was a goal for me each and every day. I was seeing him three to four times a week that every time I saw him, that he would have a wow factor on his face. A lot of times it was, yeah. and, and sometimes it wasn't, but that's where I was focusing on is the task at hand. I didn't want to get too far ahead of myself. I didn't want to overlook something. And I really looked at it as a process. The old saying is it takes 10,000 hours to be great at anything. I looked at it as like it, it's a 10,000 step process for mm -hmm. me. And for me, the steps I didn't take today, I was going to have to take in future tomorrows. And so I've made sure every day that I was putting something in there. You know, there's a lot of days I couldn't walk, but there's a lot of days I could do hip, uh, knee, and ankle range of mo yeah. uh, motion. Um, I could do some upper body stuff. Um, as soon as they said I could get on the bike, I was on the bike. I made it a point the day that they said you can start weaning off your crutches that I would. Uh, I started walking. And it was, like I said, some days are better than the other, but I think it's all about – stair step your way to that mountain top mm -hmm. because that, if you look at the mountain top all the time it can get a little uh, scary and intimidating and and, <clears throat> and you can get burnt out yeah uh, if you just consistently look in that because you're not you're not focused on the task at hand and if you focus at the task at hand you're you're consistently seeing a little progress mm -hmm. so it keeps that motivation keeps callous in your mind keeps you a more amped to wake up the next day to put your best foot forward and continue to work hard yeah, and that's exactly what all of this is, is, I mean, you've dedicated your life to being where you are. You're mm -hmm. getting up at 4 a.m., hitting the gym before hunting season. Yeah, those <laughs> doing are long doubles. days. <laughs> so not only, you know, are you incredible in the rodeo world, but you're also an avid hunter, which mm -hmm. is great because there's such a crossover there. You're hunting whitetail. You're from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you grew up big game hunting, and it, but with that, you're making some tremendous sacrifices on sleep and everything just mm -hmm. so you can kind of do it all. Yeah, and you're right. I think the, the, the outdoor world and the rodeo world has such a, 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 a combination to it. There's so many of my rodeo athlete buddies that we, we hunt, we fish, and we, yeah. we rodeo. Mm -hmm. And, and the, you know, the great thing about it is you know, the, the sport of rodeo is growing to such a professional level now where if you want to compete and be a lead and, and make it to the NFR, you can't just go off raw talent. You, no. You've got to put in your time in the gym, put it in your nutrition. And, and the great thing about the two worlds, you know, I'm going to talk about a product, you know, Wilderness Athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, they got all your supplements that you need, good, clean nutrition for your body that can sustain you in the mountains yeah. as well as in the arena. So your performance-wise for us is huge. Yeah. Just like you, you know, you, you hunt year-round all over the country. If you're not feeling to your peak and your performance, you're hydrated and you're, 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 your protein and, and your strength in your body, it's really hard to have a long career at that. And so it's through companies like Wilderness Athlete that help us, yeah. you know, benefit from both worlds. And, and it is such – they go hand in hand and – and, uh, you know, growing up in the mountains in Wyoming, uh, shoot, I, I love to hunt. I love yeah. to fish. And, you know, I think it's another part of, you know, my fitness journey as well is you go uh, hiking up and down the mountains and packing elk out and yeah. stuff like that. You, you, you can't be out of shape. You kind of got to Well, not only that, but I don't get sick days. <laughs> so if yeah. I'm out there and I'm not feeling well, which actually I really can't think of very many hunting seasons where I've been sick. Apart from when I had COVID when I was hunting. Mm -hmm. I was sick. I kept hunting, and that was probably. You're good. 
well, I got <laughs> real sick. Um, but, and if somebody would have told me, oh, you're, it's going to kick your butt, it really was bad. It got in my lungs really bad, but I kept hunting and, and wouldn't accept it, mm -hmm. right? I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not accepting this. And um, that was probably really stupid because it made my healing journey super long but we don't get sick days you yeah, know like you if i have a, a a five day elk season and i've got five days i have to be there yeah you can't say hey you know can we can we move this to yeah. next week yeah You're i'm gonna right, stay on the know? couch and today no i suck it up and i that's go like, you know my you know september and october obviously a prime hunting times for elk deer and everything and september is such a busy month for me you know i go to ellensburg washington pendleton oregon fort madison oklahoma city so i'm kind of all over the country yeah. and so it kind of eats up some of my hunting time so i always say my rodeo gets in the way of my hunting and my hunting gets in the way of my rodeoing and then it's coming into october you know it, it's kind of the the time when we're waiting for the phone call we all want to see if we get the call to come back to vegas and you know once we get that phone call you know my my gym routine uh, amps up but then again you're right S hunting season is hunting season sometimes it's four days five days six days a month yeah and you can't really postpone it mm -mm. so for me those days are three o'clock to four o'clock in the morning getting the first workout done and then going hunting all day long coming back you know uh eating some dinner and stuff letting it settle and working out again and making a game plan for for the next mm -hmm. morning so they can be a lot of a lot of long days but you know, going back to the products that you're putting in your body will help you yeah. be able to ma maintain and sustain those long durational days and staying hydrated. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just goes back to the love of the game. Yeah. You know, the passion for the sport, passion to hunt, passion at rodeo. Um, if you want something bad enough, you won't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And your level of dedication is, I, I mean, in my opinion, is second to none. Like you, you put in every minute of your day into bettering yourself or you know you know enjoying the time that you have to do things that you love like mm -hmm. go hunting but with that you don't ever lose focus on what your main goal is which mm -hmm. is your passion and rodeo and and your fitness is everything to do with that your body is your vessel that gets you where you want to be mm -hmm. year after year and to be here i mean i had lost track of how many nfrs i'd seen you at i haven't <laughs> been coming here as long as you have but you're 14 yeah. years here and what a blessing and not only that but what an honor and um you know you hear everybody call you the goat <laughs> and i and i'm sure you're like oh gosh you know and I, that is uh, is the humble person i know you are you're probably like oh geez stop <laughs> but i mean they give you that name the greatest of all time because of your dedication and not only to your own f physical performance but to the people that you're protecting and to the sport and you know there's a lot of guys that are riding when they come off you're the one person that's there to save them from a, a fate, you know, mm -hmm. a potential fate or a potential injury or, you know, in, in, in a, a possibility that nobody wants to ever see happen. And, mm -hmm. and you put yourself in that lineup and you do it unflinchingly. Um, and it's so incredible to see you out there in the arena and performing and um, you have a smile on your face. <laughs> you, know, you get rolled over last night and you get up and you're like, Phew. and you just yeah. saw, you know, you just could see your relief, mm. but also your facial expression was like, all right, let's get back to it. You, yep. I mean, you didn't even falter on that. And um, man, I, I, I'm not, I'm not taking on a, but I'm not gonna, I, I can't even, I can't even imagine doing that. I mean, but um, <laughs> That's what makes you unique to you and, you know, everybody's such a fan. And, you know, it's interesting. So we met through Montana Silversmiths. Yep. You know, we talk about yep. good nutrition and everything we're doing, but we also have other partners we work with. And you, you know, you're part of the brand of champions, which is Montana Silversmiths. Mm -hmm. And they, they're iconic in the Western world and they really represent the best of the best. And mm -hmm. you're a face of that brand. And it was funny when Yogi met you in the gym. He's like, I recognize that guy. How do I know him? And I'm like, well, I have his face all over my booth and on yeah. my website. And yeah. you're kind of like have been like the male model of my jewelry line. You didn't know it, but Montana <laughs> made you, that they works made for me. you do it. <laughs> um, so uh, it's it's been so great just watching your career change over the years. And, and the Montana family just embraces and loves you and I'm proud of being part of that family mm -hmm. with you. And I'm also proud of being part of the Wilderness Athlete family. Yep. And um, and I know, you know, everything you do, you do 
to the the highest level of integrity and you put a hundred percent dedication and everything and you know there's so many kids out there that want to be you I mean what is your advice to those kids when they walk up to you and they're just completely awestruck you know a lot of times I, I get flashbacks when I was that kid yeah and really try to uh, remember those moments when I was that because it's just giving back to the sport you know you'd I think it's, it means a lot to me to give back and, and to take that time for those kids because there were certain individuals that did that to me in my life that helped me to get to where I'm at today, whether they know it or not. So yeah. um, I think that's all part of the job. And, and the advice that I give them is just, you know, dream big and always believe. Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't uh, you know, I always say, you know, the only person that will keep you from doing anything is yourself. That's right. And I'm a firm believer in that. And it may take longer than others or shorter times than others, but continue to work hard, study your craft. You know, and even know your sport, you know, for me, it's it's the people who come before me, you know, because without them, I wouldn't have the chance to be where I'm at today. And just, uh, you know, go to good school, you know, get brought up right, because at the end of the day, fighting bulls or rodeoing in general, within three or four days of a school, your mind is really going to tell you if this is something that you really want to yeah. do and you can learn and grow from there. So, yeah, just uh, always dream and, and don't don't be afraid to believe in, in yourself and in greater things. Do you have a website? Uh, I don't have a, a just a website for me, but I've got, you know, my social media, the Instagram, the Facebooks that really try to keep my family and friends to update where I'm where I'm at, what I'm doing. And also, also you know, just to promote my great sponsors and everything and uh, what they do for me each and every year, too. Are you doing clinics for kids at this point in your career or is that yep. something you're considering? Yeah, I've done them for <clears throat> several years now. A lot of times my school's. Uh, will be in the summer, and I, I usually tie them in with the Cody Night Rodeo um, in Cody. That's kind of my home root, roots. Wyoming. Um, Wyoming. Um, you guys are going hunting there. Yeah. And uh, so I have well, a lot of history. we live there now. We're not oh, that's Cody, right. We live there now. Uh, yeah, but I got a lot of history in that arena. So it's and uh, you know Maury and Nikki Tate, who's like another mother, mother and father to me, yeah. and the, they're two little girls I call sisters. I've known them since they were three and six. So um, I watched them grow up and do great things. So taking it back to that arena where it, it helped build you know my career um is is a great place for me each and every summer and I'll, i usually try to put two to five schools on a summer depending on my schedule and how the calendar year yeah. falls but yeah in the summertime we usually strike some up and really try to get back so if you guys are out there and you or anyone in your family wants to attend one of Dusty's schools, they're going to be in Cody, Wyoming at some point this summer. Mm -hmm. If you follow him on his social media, you can register for that. Or if you just want to find some inspiration in fitness, in health, in life, in faith, in a walk, in just being and doing an incredible job and excelling at everything you do, this man is an incredible role model. I encourage you mm -hmm. all to follow him. And um, Come to the NFR and watch them in the stadium live. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're all here. We're all here for you guys. I mean, yeah. look, I mean, how awesome is it that everybody that is here, how many people come here a year? Uh, I don't even know the numbers anymore. Um, you know, since I've been coming, you know, the Vegas and the venues and the events and just everything that can be so much family oriented. Yeah has grown you know we used to be over in the north hall which was a lot smaller yeah they brought this cowboy uh, uh cowboy christmas over to the south hall and then uh, there's a downstairs and an upstairs yeah. and we're in the uh rmef section a lot of hunting and different yeah. uh, stuff going on here but down downstairs i mean anything i mean this is why they call it cowboy christmas yeah. because you can really find anything yeah. here and there's other venues going out throughout uh, the town and and then other watch parties and obviously you know the the hottest ticket in town and the hardest ticket in town to find is you know each and every night at the Wrangler N NFR yeah. so um, if they if you guys get a chance to come out it, it is definitely an experience um, like no other um, and you it's know. the best cowboys and cowgirls in the world that these are people that are dedicating their life not only to their craft but also to their livestock I mean yep. and they are pairing up you know every night that you guys are doing bull riding every pen of bulls has a, a kind of a similar theme or a similar characteristic mm -hmm. and they really try to pair up those pens with the riders so that everybody has a really equal chance and there's so much mm -hmm. science and genetics that are going into this um, oh, yeah. and the 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 heritage of rodeo is really transformed incredibly and um and do you have like a pen of bulls where you're like oh gosh tonight's the eliminator pen ah i mean is there yeah. like a night where you're like oh this is gonna uh, be like a more challenging night than another or? Uh, for us not so much i mean uh, depending on what bullfighter you talk to but uh for me you know a bull's a bull and yeah. at the end of the day he's gonna be as bad as you paint him in your mind so our our 
our job does, ne never does change. It's all about reaction and position ourselves. Yes, there is a couple nights ago we had the eliminator pin. Yeah. And so on the bull rider side of it, there's definitely one or two in there that you would much rather draw. Yeah. Because they've got a trick to them or, a, you know, kind of a dirty move. Um, and so that, that pin of bulls can be, uh, I want to say, chal more challenging for us, but they're more unpredictable. Yeah. Um, to where they're a little more scattered. They don't really have a pattern. And so that's why it's all about the reaction game. If I try predicting this is what this bull's going to do, especially in a pin like that, they're going to make me look like a fool. So yeah. you just got to be prepared for the worst and hope for the best and just step step in there and do your job. Well, we're excited to watch you perform again tonight mm -hmm. and um, obviously throughout this entire NFR week. And uh, thank you so much for taking time to sit mm, down absolutely. with me. I just really appreciate it and I appreciate everything you do. And um, you guys follow Dusty on Facebook, Instagram. It's just at Dusty Tuckness. So D-U-S-T-Y-T-U-C-K-N-E-S-S, -S, right? Nailed it. Boom! I know how to spell. Yes! <laughs> I did it. Thank you guys for joining me for this episode of the Wild Nun Cut Podcast. And Dusty, again, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me today. I really appreciate no it. No problem. Absolutely. A buck's antler growth potential is tied directly to his nutritional intake. The quicker they recover from the stress of the rut and the harsh elements found in winter months, the sooner they can begin new antler development. Supplemental nutrition, like the Rack One system, promotes healthy deer herds and jumpstarts new antler growth. Rack One's grow phase is specifically designed to provide everything that deer need to recover and reach their genetic potential. Accelerator is the apex when it comes to optimizing whitetail mineral intake. And big game butters fuel deer with 22% protein and 44% fat to boost antler growth and supercharge recovery. To learn more about the Grow, Scout, or Hunt systems from Rack One, visit the website at huntrack1.com. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.